So, you want to be an English teacher in Korea? You've been dreaming about it, but you keep running into this racist crap? I know, it sucks. It's totally effed up. I don't know what to say other than that. But I do think I have some tips and tricks for getting you that job. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. So you're planning on going to Korea, but you don't know how to speak Korean yet. And you've probably been watching my videos and you're probably wondering how I learned to speak Korean so well. Well, one of the ways that you learn to speak a language well is by speaking with a real native speaker. And that's where italki.com comes in. italki.com connects you with real live native teachers that can help you. They can correct your sentences. They can correct your grammar. They give you that real human interaction that you need, that you're craving to get in learning Korean. So check out the promotion that I have down below from italki.com and you guys buy Buy one lesson, you get one lesson free. So make sure you check out italki.com. Okay, so now on to our actual video. You know, one of the things that I was really, actually one of the things I didn't think about before I went to Korea was that it was gonna be harder for me to get a job as a black person. I never thought about it. And when recruiters weren't calling me back, I didn't really think that that had anything to do with me being black. I just thought like, oh, I've never been a teacher there before. I don't speak Korean. So maybe that's the reason why I'm not getting the kind of responses that I was expecting. You know, but then after being in Korea for quite a few years, trying to get jobs and still getting the same thing with recruiters just not responding to me. And this is when I was like, you know, pretty, I wouldn't say fluent in Korean, but I was pretty conversational in Korean. I'd been teaching in Korea for like four or five, six years. I had plenty of experience. I had great references, but I couldn't get a call back. I couldn't get anyone to respond to me. And I had to sort of come up with my own ways of getting noticed and getting jobs. And I have some tips that are gonna sort of help you out when you're looking for a job as a non-white person in Korea. And I wanna say this first, I'm not saying like, I'm not like dissing <laughs> white people or anything like that, but in this case, you're definitely, you're at an advantage. Um, Korean people tend to think that speaking English, I think, I'm gonna start here, you know what? In Korea, right, Korean, and a lot of my students thought about it like this, you know, Korea is full of Korean. China is full of Chinese people. Japan is full of Japanese people. So when you say America, or when you say England, they're thinking white people. Like, England equals white people, America equals white people. They don't really realize that there are lots of other kinds of people that are in these countries that are native speakers of English, that have been born there, whose great, great, great grandparents have also been born there. They don't really realize that. And so when they're looking for a native English speaking teacher, they're thinking a white teacher. At least the schools are, and the schools are assuming that parents are also thinking a white teacher. So if they hire a black teacher, or they hire a Hispanic teacher, or they hire someone that doesn't look traditionally white, then they get worried that parents are not going to want to send their kids there because they're going to think that they're not real native speakers. And for black people, they kind of worry that you're going to walk into class like, yo, yo, what's up? You know, <laughs> like I can't even say that convincingly, <laughs> but they, they definitely assume that that's what you're going to be doing in the class. And that's the kind of stuff that you're going to teach the kids. And they're worried that your grammar is going to be bad or that you're not smart or that you're fat and loud or whatever other stereotypes people have about black people. Um, and so this really affects your ability to get jobs. And, you know, I've had people straight up tell me this. And if you look at job ads, you'll see white only, white only jobs. Like, like this takes you, like, it makes me feel like I'm going way back. Like, it, it, it says it flat out white only, sorry, no blacks, no gyokbo. So Korean Americans, you're totally in this category as well. You count um, Asian, Asian Americans, Asian Europeans, whatever. You guys count as well. They don't see you as a native English speaker, even if you are. So they'll very specifically say it. And this is how I, I won't say I got around it because you can't really, but this is how I sort of dealt with that. And these are some of the tips that I have for you guys. Um, yeah, so let's get started. It's, Number I, one, it's much better to go, to look for big named hagwans. And hagwans are English academies if you don't already know that. So big named hagwans. You're gonna look for your topias, your jungtae, your, um, what is the SDA? Uh, I'm trying to think of like the big brand names, but for some reason I can't think of any of, the, any of them, right? Oh, Pagoda. And you're gonna look for those sort of like big name schools because they tend to be a little more relaxed when it comes to hiring um, teachers, not in terms of like they don't want qualified people, but they definitely don't seem to care as much about uh, race and stuff like that because they're huge names. They're not, their reputation isn't based solely on one teacher. They've got schools all over Korea. They're super popular. Um, and so you're not really going to have the same kind of issues getting jobs with those companies because they're so big and you know, they're not really ruined. They're not really worried about their reputation being ruined because they have like, you know, one Latina teacher, like they're not really worried about that. So you'll have much more luck, um, 
you have much more luck applying at big schools than you will small schools. But there's definitely a downside to that because in my opinion, the small schools are like infinitely better um, if you are, especially if you're, um, you know, if you're anyone, small schools are just better because you get this like sort of one-on-one -on -one relationship with the owner and with the other teachers. Um, they tend to be, they tend to sort of make you feel like you're part of a family. Whereas I found at the big schools, I felt like I was just like a number in a sea full of teachers. Like, yes, they are definitely more efficient in a lot of ways. Um, they have a lot of the kinks worked out, but I always had a much better time at smaller schools than I did at larger schools. And so I think that's definitely a a downside of having to apply to these like big schools but you will find that a lot of the big schools will be way more willing to hire you than a lot of the small schools so if you're tired of looking try looking at the sort of big academies that might be better okay number two public school is even better than that like so you know it's gonna go like the small hangwans are probably at the bottom um, and then you're gonna have um, the big schools and then you're gonna have public schools like way at the top because I found that I think just because like a public school isn't money based. I mean they are they are functioning with the with the budget and all of that, but they're not like profit based. Like these are public schools. They're funded by tax money. So they I always felt like they didn't really I mean I saw lots of like all most of my Gyopal friends, like all the Asian American European whatever friends, most of them were teaching in public school. Um, I, you know, I was teaching in public school. Most of the black people I know were teaching in public school, like all my Latino, fr Latino friends, you know, all of them were pretty much teaching in the public schools um, because it's just a lot easier to get a job there. They seem to be much more open-minded. The people who work there were more open-minded. Um, I'm talking Epic, Epic, SMOE. I worked for SMOE. Um, and yeah, so I found that those, the, the, the public school tended to be a much better place. But because public school have cut down on the number of teachers they have, there's no more middle school, no more high school. As far as I know, most of my friends, I know they lost their jobs doing that like three years ago or something like that. Um, so there's really only elementary school, which means all of those experienced teachers move to elementary school. So it's going to be quite hard for you to find jobs in Epic, Epic and SMOE. Um, but you can still find them. It's just a little bit more difficult than it was when I first started um, teaching in Korea, which was like six, seven years ago. Okay, so the next one is going to be, um, okay, so when you're submitting your resume, and some of the sites that I will list are uh, Craigslist, uh, workandplay.com, Dave's ESL. So when you're looking at these um, websites, and if you're not going through a recruiter, you're going to see lots of stuff, and even the recruiters are going to ask you to submit a picture. And this is what... This sounds really bad and it makes me sad to say it, but don't submit your picture with it. And at first I would always do it. I would always submit my picture together like it asked, but then I realized that by submitting my picture, they were just gonna look at my picture first and they were never gonna look at my resume. And even though my resume was great, I'd been teaching for a long time. Like I said, I had great references. They weren't gonna look at my resume because they were just gonna see my, you know, dark, luscious, chocolatey skin, and they were gonna be like, nope, <laughs> pass. Um, so I stopped submitting my picture with it, and I found that at least I got some responses. People would reply to me, and then I could just tell if they were flat out racist or not, because once I sent my picture, maybe they wouldn't call me back. Um, but I, they would at least talk to me, they'd look at my resume, they might even tell a school, oh, I think I found someone, and then they'd ask me for my picture and other stuff. Um, but that was, you know, I usually found that that was my way to get in with them because they're like, oh, this is a really good experienced teacher. And then they saw my picture and then they were like, eh, but she's black, but you know, maybe that's okay. Um, and they might even call you and then when they can hear your voice and they can, you know, hear sort of how eloquent you are, um, they might be more likely to hire you. So don't submit your picture right away. Submit it after they ask for it again. Also, when you do your picture, make sure you look super professional. Like this is something that I don't like, I didn't really understand what the picture was about. Like I was like, what, what kind of picture do they want? But go to like an actual, like, I don't know if you have to go to a studio, but like take a nice, like clear, crisp, edited picture, edit that, edit the Photoshop the crap. I mean, your skin needs to be flawless and your lips all luscious looking like, you can Photoshop it. Like nobody cares. Korean Photoshop, all of their pictures, even their passport pictures. So definitely like have like an on point, like makeup is like nice. Um, and I know this sounds horrible, but this is just, I'm just talking about getting, you know, a job, how to get a job. I'm not talking about what's right or what's wrong. Um, so yeah, I would say try to look as neutral as possible. Cover all of your tattoos, piercings, all of that. Although I had an eyebrow piercing for like five of the years I was in Korea. I didn't, I don't know. Maybe that's why I wasn't getting jobs, who knows. Um, but cover, I used to like just edit out my piercing in the pictures. Um, so do all of that to make yourself look as presentable as possible because they are gonna count every little thing against you and they'll be way more likely to hire a pretty teacher because it's Korea, I mean, let's just be honest. Um, and so, yeah, so try to make sure that you 
have a picture that you think really represents your absolute best self. Like, that's really important. Um, and yeah, so, yeah, it's stupid. I mean, I submitting a picture, I, whatever. That's a whole other topic. Okay, um, number four. If you realize you're not gonna, if you're like, because I would go on Craigslist and I would send like 10 emails to like the same recruiter trying to get certain jobs for them and they would never reply. If they're not replying, move on. Like, I wasted so much time like trying to get like, please reply to me, I'm a really good teacher, please, 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 please. You know, but they don't want to reply to me because they're racist most of the time. So, um, yeah, don't really worry about that. Just move on. Keep going. <laughs> don't focus on it. Don't linger in it because they're never going to, they're just like not really going to be that interested in you. Um, okay. The next one is don't rely only on recruiters. Like on a lot of websites, you can just type like teaching English in Korea and a lot of it will be recruiters that come up. I didn't have much luck with recruiters. Recruiters get paid based on how many teachers they place in school. So if they can place you in a school, then they get extra money. But when you're a minority and, you know, in their mind, they're like, I don't think that we're going to be able to find a school for her. or I think it's going to be hard to get this person a job. They're not going to want to waste their time on you because it's all this time they're trying to find you a school and like you might not get one or they think that schools are going to be upset with the, the quality that they're bringing in or whatever. Um, so I found that not relying on recruiters and just like, I think work and play, I found a lot of jobs, Craigslist, the yeah, Daisy SL, I said those already, but yeah, those sites are pretty good for finding jobs on your own. Um, and that said, um, if you're not relying on the recruiters, you can try to apply directly to the schools because I actually had the best luck and the best schools that I worked for when I were, were when I applied directly to a school. So there was like a teacher from the school posting like, hey, our school's looking for someone. If I talk to them, usually they were pretty cool because most of the time, the one that they're having you communicate with is the teacher that studied abroad and who's like super awesome. So you end up getting getting to communicate with people who probably aren't as close-minded as like the owners of the Hagwon or some of these recruiters and stuff. So you have a much higher chance of being hired just because you're talking usually with younger people who speak English really, like maybe not really fluently, but they speak English a lot better. So um, that's one way that you can do it. Um, and if you know someone who speaks Korean, they might even be able to go on the Korean sites because Jay actually helped me go on a bunch of Korean sites and um, list my profile as well. And that also sort of helped me a little bit. Okay, and last one, or not last one, um, use your best phone voice. So, you know, like, if you're normally really chill and you're like, hey, what's up, you know, I don't, um, I don't really talk like that, but <laughs> if you're normally, your voice is really, like, chill, try to put on your friendliest, best phone voice, like, no slang whatsoever, no slang, just, like, speak as perfectly as you possibly can, um, and that's going to be a really big help because they're already thinking that you're just going to answer the phone, like, using all this kind of slang and stuff and that you, maybe you're not that intelligent, um, and so you've got to sort of prove them wrong, and especially, like, if you're a gyopo or something like that, like, they've got to know that your English is on point because they're going to sort of think that you probably don't speak English that like they don't trust your I don't even know why even though you're born probably abroad like they don't trust that you can speak English properly so you have to show them that you can't just speak it properly you speak it beautifully like lose whatever regional accent that you have um, from your country and try to speak whatever the most neutral like clear version of your country's accent is if that makes any sense well this isn't really a tip I just wanted to say don't get too discouraged. Like, I know it seems like, oh my gosh, like it's gonna be horrible being um, a black or Hispanic or whatever teacher or, you know, Asian um, teacher in Korea, it's gonna suck. And there are things about it that are not great, but I would say like 98% of the time, I had a great time and I didn't really feel the racism. There were some times when it was like they were doing outdoor promotion and they told me to stay back and they just had the white teacher go out, but I'm, there are little things like that. But for the most part, I found that once I got into a school, the schools that were willing to accept me were always, always really great to me. Although I do have a story I'll tell you later, I have ones, they were not great to me, I have one in school. But for the most part, people were really great to me. And um, yeah, I just, I found that once I got into the school, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. And I had lots of, like outside of school, I had great friends, I had a great time on the day to day. I didn't really experience a whole lot of like intense racism, but finding a job could be a little bit difficult. And it's definitely more difficult. And if any of you are watching who are not like a minority or whatever, or you're not, if you're at, if you are a Caucasian person, I just want to say, please do not apply to jobs that say white only. Like, I feel like it's sort of common sense that you don't want to work for a place that's like that, for one. Um, and also, I think it's really important that recruiters don't think that that's okay. 
right? They don't, like, they don't, they need to think that that's not okay. That if they do that, they're just not going to get teachers. And, but as of now, people still apply to those jobs. So they're just thinking, well, I'll just find the white teacher. Like, I'll find the good white teachers. Like, they don't realize that, like, that what they're doing is wrong and that it needs to stop. So if you see a whites only ad and you are white, please do not apply for the job. Or if you see a whites only ad and you can like pass for white or whatever, also please do not apply. Um, they need to know that what they're doing is wrong. And I think it's, it's you know, sometimes, I've occasionally sent an email <laughs> saying that's a little bit hurtful, but you don't have to go that far. But I think, you know, at least don't support them and don't support recruiters who do that kind of thing because it's uncalled for. Okay, so I hope that those tips helped you and you know, it's difficult, but teaching over Korea is also really amazing and it's really rewarding. So if you can find a job and if you can get someone to like ex to get to a school to accept you, you're going to be, I, I believe you're going to have a great time there and you're going to be really happy that you worked hard to do it. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please make sure to comment down below. Um, and if you have any suggestions for how you found a job or, you know, if you, I don't know, maybe I was doing something wrong. I don't know. If you have a different experience please let me know down in the information box and let me know sort of how you feel about that. And um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. So that's it for this video. And let me know if you also want more videos talking about teaching English in Korea. I have one more planned that I'm gonna do, but um, let me know if you guys have any questions about that. Okay, so make sure to comment, like, subscribe. Also, thank you again to italki.com for supporting us. Um, yeah, join us on, on Tumblr, on Twitter, on all the things, on Instagram. Our social media links are down below. Um, hashtag AskJHeartsJ. If you guys have any questions, you can tweet at us. And yeah, that's it. Okay, bye guys. Bye bodies so I had these like four-year-olds like giggling and of course the little like, the little boys and girls put all of the pubic hair for the woman and they put all of it on her privates on her vajayjay and we're like this is what my mommy looks like and I was like oh no